So now it's the part of the agenda that we've all been waiting for. Uh, we get to uh, finally get to the point of the point in the day where we're turning the uh, mics over to all of you individuals uh, with lupus, as well as uh, those individuals, uh, loved ones, family members, those that care for them, or as Kathleen said, those that even carry you all um, are invited to participate. So what I'm gonna do is just spend a couple of minutes giving you a little bit of an overview of uh, how it is exactly uh, we plan uh, to uh, it, bring your voice to the conversation um, and the questions that we'll be asking you. And then we're gonna uh, go ahead and dive into our first uh, topic. So today's uh, uh, topics uh, for your input are two. The first of these topics um, as you've heard from uh, Pujita and Dr. Woodcock and others, is to really understand uh, the burdens and symptoms of lupus that most impact your daily lives. So the questions that we're gonna pose to you um, are to you know, get your input on those symptoms uh, that have the most significant impact on your life and try to understand why that is. We wanna know what are the activities that are important to you and um, those that you maybe aren't able to do as much or at all because of your lupus. We wanna understand kind of uh, the variability in the burdens of lupus, your best days, your worst days, how, that's, how lupus uh, symptoms and burdens have changed over time, as well as to find out uh, what, worries most, uh, what worries you most about uh, lupus in the future. The second topic, which we'll uh, cover in the afternoon portion of our meeting, um, then builds on this early morning uh, conversation we're gonna have to turn to look at what are your current approaches to treating lupus and what might you be looking for from future treatments. So we're gonna ask you what you're currently doing to treat your conditions, uh, your condition. Um, this will include uh, not only drug therapies, but other um, approaches to managing your lupus. Um, we wanna know kind of you know, how well is this treatment regimen and strategy working for you? Um, and what are the downsides of uh, those things that you're, you've tried uh, either currently or maybe something in the past that you're, you're no longer um, able to use? Um, then we're gonna uh, turn a little bit to the future and we're gonna ask you some questions about what you're looking for from future therapy. So essentially we're gonna ask, short of a cure, uh, what specific things would you be looking for from an ideal lupus treatment? And what are some of the factors that you take into account when making decisions about selecting a course of treatment? And this might help uh, inform what you're looking for from a future treatment. Within each of these topics, uh, we're gonna be bringing your voice uh, forward through um, a few different methods. Uh, for each of the two topics, we're gonna start with a panel discussion. So we're gonna uh, invite um, a number of representatives from your community uh, to the stage, and they're gonna share their experience with uh, lupus using answering those same questions that we just shared. Uh, the panelists were uh, selected by the uh, steering committee for this meeting uh, to really represent diversity of people with lupus, but of course, they don't represent the full diversity, which is why we will then, uh, following the panels, um, be engaging the rest of you in the audience. Um, we will have a facilitated discussion um, with all of you where we'll actually have an uh, opportunity for you to raise your hand um, and we'll, we'll talk and explore um, some of your experiences for each of those two topics. Um, you know, we'll again ask you to uh, raise your hand and please state your name um, before responding. Um, as you know, we are recording this uh, meeting and this will allow us to reference back and track perhaps your responses uh, to allow us to associate some of your different experiences as we explore different questions. As part of our audience discussion, we'll actually start out with a series of polling questions. Um, so these are questions that everyone um, that is a individual with lupus or uh, one of their representatives, again, a, a family member or someone that helps care for um, you, uh, will ans uh, can answer these questions. You'll actually use your cell phones or if you happen to have a tablet or a laptop with you, you can do so over your browser uh, or uh, via text and we'll go through those instructions uh, when we get to that point. Uh, also, for those of you that are participating by web, you'll actually be able to participate in those polling questions as well and your uh, responses will be captured. 
So just a couple of uh, ground rules before we jump in uh, and start uh, uh, exploring some of these uh, topics with you. Um, again, we want to encourage all of you, you know, you made the trip here um, and we really appreciate it. So we encourage all of you um, that are individuals, people with lupus and their representatives to participate. Um, we are focusing the discussion today on symptoms and treatments, the questions that I just went over. Um, and we have a open public uh, or an open comment period reserved at the end of the day for topics that might uh, build on or go beyond uh, the topics that we have uh, to discuss during the uh, facilitated part of the agenda. Uh, so we ask that you reserve any such comments for FDA um, until that uh, part of the agenda. Um, we know, we want you to know that uh, your views are your personal ones. We know that uh, this can be a very personal and uh, emotional um, set of experiences that you're going to be sharing. Um, and we do recognize that and appreciate that. Um, given that everyone uh, may have different experiences uh, living with lupus, uh, we do ask that you uh, respect one another. Uh, you know, it's okay to have, uh, share both similarities and differences uh, in your experiences that you might have, either with the symptoms and burdens of lupus, but also with uh, treatment options. Um, and as also as part of this uh, respect that we ask, we do ask that you uh, try to keep your comments uh, concise. There's a lot of you in the room today and we wanna try to have as many voices heard as possible. Uh, so with that, I'm gonna ask you to all go ahead and pull out your cell phones, tablets, laptops. We're gonna go into our uh, demographic polling questions. Yeah, one second and the instructions will load. So we actually have a test question. Um, so. Uh, we've pulled out your, your, um, your phone, your, your tablet, your laptop. If you go to www.pollev.com forward slash lupus PFDD, the URL is on the top of this slide here, um, you'll be able to access the questions. Also, if you prefer to use text, if you send a text to 22333, and as the body of the message, type lupus PFDD, um, you will kind of enroll yourself in the texting program. Um, once you've done either of those two things, uh, you can go ahead and uh, answer our test question, which is just to, to make sure you're, you're logged in, um, is what is your favorite color? And so here you get uh, one, one response option, so please select uh, only one. Uh, the options are A, red, B, orange, C, yellow, D, green, E, blue, and uh, what is already a fan favorite, F purple. Um, so go ahead and, and log in. If you have any issues, uh, please raise your hand and someone will come by to assist you. Um, if you're on the web browser, um, you'll be able to see visually that you've selected a response. Um, if you've sent a text, it should, uh, once you're enrolled, just know that once you hit send, it will go through um, and log your response. So we'll just give you a, a minute to, to get into the system. And please raise your hand if you're having any issues. Is that right here? Could someone, do we have someone that can come and assist? Maybe phone a friend? We have one person having trouble accessing the polling. All right, I can come down in. Well, I would have been disappointed if purple was not the favorite response. So um, thank you for meeting my expectations of you all. <laughs> all right, so now we're gonna move into the um, actual demographic questions. We're gonna run through these. Um, this is gonna help us gather some information about who it is that uh, is being represented today, both in person and online. Um, so with that, our first demographic question is where do you live? and you're, uh, please select one. Your response options are A, the Northeast, B, the Mid-Atlantic, C, the Midwest, 
D, the south, E, the mountain region, or F, the west coast. I'll give you a minute to go ahead and enter your responses. Again, all individuals with lupus and their, um, even if you're here with a, a person uh, with lupus, but if you're uh, one of their loved ones, someone that helps care for them, um, please feel free to also participate. Looks like the results are still trickling in a little. And I know there is, um, so you may be aware for those on the web that there is probably a few second time delay um, in the video feed with what you're um, seeing come through on the polling. So please feel free to answer the polling questions as soon as they appear for you. Okay, so it looks, um, you know, maybe not surprisingly, uh, given where the meeting's being held, uh, that we have about a little less than a third of you are from the Northeast, and about 20% are from the Mid-Atlantic. Uh, but we have good representation uh, across most, most of the regions, uh, including the Midwest, South, and West. Uh, and there's only maybe a couple of you uh, representing the mountain region. Hopefully some of you are in person, but uh, if not, thank you for, for tuning in uh, via the web. Uh, next question. So our next polling question um, is uh, to please identify which of the following category you fall in. A, an individual living with lupus. B, a parent or legal guardian of a child with lupus. Or C, a representative of an adult with lupus. So again, please select one of those three. Give you another minute or so um, to log your response. So I think it's uh, very clear that we uh, mostly, uh, most of our participants are individuals living with lupus, but we also have some representatives um, of adults with lupus. Um, and it looks like uh, nobody has logged or a response as a parent or legal guardian of a guardian of a child with lupus. Um, so if you if you are a, a parent or legal guardian of a child with lupus, please do um, respond. We are very interested in the input that you have to share. Next question. So next uh, question, we just ask the age, or if you're a caregiver or representative of a person with lupus, please enter the age of the uh, individual with lupus that you're representing. The options are A, younger than 18, B, 18 to 29 years, C, 30 to 39 years, D, 40 to 49 years, E, 50 to 59 years, and lastly, F, 60 or older. So again, this is the age of the individual with lupus you're representing, either yourself um, or if you're a representative, the person that you uh, help care for. So as the results are trickling in, it looks like we have good representation um, for those uh, individuals with lupus that are uh, in the 40 to 49 year uh, decade. Uh, after that, we have um, approximately a quarter represented from 30 to 39 years, about a fifth of you in the f represented from 50 to 59 years, um, fair number of representation from 18 to 29 or 16 older, um, and we do have some, so uh, thank you for, for representing those that are younger than 18, um, an important voice. Next question. So our next question is, do you identify as male, female, or other A, B, or C? And I guess I should clarify again, this is about the individual with lupus that you represent, either yourself 
uh, or if you're a representative um, of a person with lupus, uh, what they identify as, male, female, or other. Okay, uh, it looks like uh, nearly 90% um, of our uh, individuals with lupus represented are female, um, and about 10% are represented are male. Um, also, not uh, that surprising, but uh, important to note. So, next question. So the question here is how long ago were you uh, or the person that you represent officially diagnosed with lupus? The responses are A, less than two years, B, two to five years, C, six to 10 years, D, 11 to 20 years, or E, more than 20 years. Please select one. you a few more seconds to respond here. So we have uh, quite a few long time lupus warriors with us, uh, about a quarter in the, um, you know, having been diagnosed more than 20 years ago and uh, quite a few, uh, you know, greater than 10 years uh, and less than 20, um, a little over a quarter of you. But we do have good representation from the six, uh, those diagnosed six to 10 years ago uh, and two to five years ago. And we have a number of you that were even diagnosed less than two years ago. Next question. Uh, so this question is what type of lupus do you or the uh, individual you represent have? And here you can check all that apply. So this is the first time um, if you're on a browser, you can select multiple responses. Um, or if you are doing the text, you can type in multiple letters. Uh, so here, um, the options are A, cutaneous or skin uh, lupus, uh, the, of the subacute form. Uh, we also have cutaneous lupus of the discoid uh, lupus form. Uh, C is drug-induced lupus. Uh, D is SLE with nephritis or kidney disease. E is SLE with nephritis or kidney disease. And of course, F if you're not sure. So please select all that apply. And go ahead and uh, give you another minute to do that. I know since there's multiple responses, we'll give you a little extra time. So it looks like the type of lupus uh, that is most represented uh, within our audience is SLE with kidney disease. Um, and then the second most at about 25% is SLE uh, with kidney disease. Or did I say that the, the opposite way? Thank you, sorry. Mostly without kidney disease and then 25% with kidney disease. Um, we do have some representation uh, from the uh, two forms of cutaneous lupus does not look like we have any representation from uh, drug-induced lupus um, or individuals that we're not sure. Next question. And this is our final demographic question. Uh, what best describes your lupus or lupus of the uh, person that you represent? Um, select either A, I have uh, joint and or skin in symptoms. B, I have inflammation of other parts of the body apart from joints and skin. Or C, I have inflammation or involvement of organs such as the heart, lungs, brain, or kidneys. I'll just give you another minute to respond to this question. Well, I think uh, over half um, of you uh, best describe your lupus as being that of having inflammation or involvement of organs, um, such as the heart, lungs, brain, or kidneys. Um, after that, about a third of you um, best describe your lupus as having joint and or skin symptoms, 
than about 10% um, having, uh, describe it as having inflammation of other parts of the body apart from skin and joints. Uh, so with that, that concludes our demographic questions and I'll invite our first panel to the stage. Thanks. Thanks. We can switch back to the uh, other slide deck. There we go. Um, so again, uh, we're now diving into our first topic. Um, I just, a few moments ago, um, provided you the, the questions, but I, they're here again for your reference. Um, so over the next um, uh, amount of time that we have prior to lunch, so this morning, um, we're going to be um, discussing the disease symptoms and daily impacts of lupus that matter most to you. And so uh, in order to kick off our discussion, um, as I mentioned, we have a panel of individuals with lupus uh, and their representatives uh, to help explore some of those questions um, and kick off what will be our larger discussion um, on disease symptoms and daily impacts. And so uh, to do that, we have a great panel for you here today. We have Tiffany Osbury, Rajiv uh, Manglani, Shanna Garcia, Laura Tanner, Chris Reed, and Elizabeth Beck, who will each uh, share their uh, personal experiences. Tiffany. Thank you. My name is Tiffany Osbury, and I am a 19-year-old lupus patient from Gulfport, Mississippi. I was recently diagnosed with systemic lupus in October of 2016. I spent my senior year of high school secretly knowing I had lupus, but after my pediatrician told me that there was no way I could actually have it. I did the research myself and quickly knew that's what I had. I was unable to receive a clear diagnosis for the next year of my journey through doctors. Throughout this time period, I chose to continue cheering for my senior year of high school, but it came at the high cost of watching my symptoms progress. Practices eventually became unbearable. My brain fog and fatigue would be so bad that I would forget where I was going in the routine or even the counts of when to do my skills. I would feel like I was running on nails when I had to keep going during conditioning. I had to accommodate my conditioning so much that sometimes my teammates even began saying I was faking all of this or that it was unfair. I began to feel distance from my friends and teammates and that no one believed me. Once I had moved away to college, I went to the doctor on campus because I could no longer function. My ANA blood work came back positive for the first time out of five tries. I immediately got to my rheumatologist and she diagnosed me with mixed connective tissue disease, including lupus, myositis, and arthritis. Although this was a shock for everyone else, I already knew and was happy to have a diagnosis. Lupus has changed my life in so many ways over the past two years. I used to be a competitive cheerleader and dancer that dreamed of moving on to the college level, but the symptoms I experienced with lupus have prevented that from ever happening. The constant joint pain, rashes, and fatigue have prevented me from doing everything I used to enjoy. I can no longer cheer or dance because of this undeniable pain that has taken over my life when I exercise. I am now a full-time student at the University of Southern Mississippi, and luckily I have been able to get involved on campus and in my sorority. I eventually was able to find joy in that part of my life. On my bad days, my symptoms with lupus have prevented me from going to class, making it to my meetings, and pursuing my dream job. The energy required to get out of bed sometimes is just impossible to find. My back and joint pain makes carrying a book bag a very painful task. I am also limited in my day-to-day -day life because of these symptoms at a larger level. Some lupus has also prevented me from living on campus like most other college students because my symptoms are so unexpectable. It is hard to have a roommate when you need constant naps, have a suppressed immune system, and never know what the next day may bring. My whole life, I have done everything 110%. I was always the most outgoing person in my friend groups, and I never struggled in school. Since I have begun experiencing my lupus symptoms, I have had to learn that this is no longer who I am. I now struggle to stay awake and focus in school. I've had to step back and realize that sometimes I need to give less than 100% to get through the day or even the task. I have missed out on so many college experiences because I was in too much pain, couldn't be in the sun long without experiencing severe rashes, 
or didn't have the energy that everyone else did. I used to dream of becoming an exotic veterinarian. Because my symptoms from lupus and myositis could not be controlled by methotrexate pills or injections, I had to begin a more harsh treatment. My new chemotherapy treatment suppresses my immune system to the point to where it would be too dangerous to take the labs I would need to graduate college and go to vet school. Luckily, I have decided to go into the rheumatology field as a pediatric nurse so I can help other children just like myself. This process will be very difficult, especially on my worst days, when I can barely walk because my feet are so painful and my muscles do not allow me to move. Hopefully, my new treatment and future treatments will allow me to live a more normal life in the future where I'm not as limited by my physical capabilities. I'll also worry that future symptoms and medications may have side effects that will just mask these symptoms with different symptoms, like my previous medication did. That medication used to cause severe nausea and I struggled to eat while on the medication. This was be hard because I already did not feel good and then eating caused even more symptoms. When thinking about the future, there are many worries that come to mind. I know that organ involvement is a very common symptom of lupus and that worries me when thinking about having a family and trying to handle everything. I worry about how successful I will be in nursing school and as a nurse with the limitations that lupus provides. The idea of having successful treatments that will treat my symptoms is what keeps me going. Lupus has made me feel excluded, alone, and without hope. But today, through experiences like this, I feel included, I feel supported, and, not, and last but not least, I have hope. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Rajiv Aaron Minglani. I want to thank our hosts, our sponsors, the FDA, and everyone for arranging and attending this meeting. Lupus is a complex disease, and I'm glad that our voices as patients will be heard through this meeting. I am 43 years old, and I live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, with my wife, our eight-year-old daughter, and twin four-year-old boys. I consider myself to be extremely lucky on many counts when it comes to my early lupus diagnosis. For some patients, it can take years, for a diagnosis to be determined, and the scope of their symptoms can in increase and escalate during that time. Since lupus is even more rare in men than in women, it can often be missed. I was diagnosed with lupus in late 2014 after experiencing extreme fatigue and skin rashes. My diagnosis came soon after symptoms started, and I credit my doctors with catching lupus early and allowing me to start treatment and have a mild case. My PCP at the time was quite experienced and had been practicing for several decades. He was very thorough and did not immediately write off my fatigue as a result of so many other things that it could have been. As the parents of twins and an older daughter, my wife and I are constantly tired. I mean, aren't all parents? So when our boys were two years old and I started being unable to get out of bed in the morning, or I found myself too tired in the evenings to even eat dinner, I first thought these were just symptoms of being a new parent again but my PCP suspected something else was wrong. Through blood tests, he and other doctors discovered that I had anemia with a root cause of SLE. Even though I'm now on both steroids and immunosuppressants, I continue to have active lupus symptoms. Fatigue is the most impactful and limiting to being able to live the life that my family and I would like. I am grateful that between current therapies and a flexible employer, I am still able to work full time. But even with a flexible work schedule, not being able to wake up in the mornings with the rest of the family means that I cannot get our kids ready for school. Sometimes my fatigue is so severe that I do not get out of bed until well after the kids are already in school and my wife is at work. This means that often I do not have breakfast with my family in the mornings. I do not drive our morning carpool and I cannot have all the meaningful interactions that I would like to have with our children. All of this puts a lot of stress on my wife, who sometimes acts as a single parent to our three kids. And I think about what lupus makes me miss out on. What am I not teaching my kids because I just cannot get out of bed and walk downstairs to be with them? My doctors have also said that I have discoid lupus. 
This affects my skin and causes painful lesions and plaques on my fingers, toes, genitals, scalp, ears, in my ear canals, and in my nasal passages. At times, these plaques sting and burn. They have led to hair loss, and some of them bleed on occasion. On the worst days, such as during a flare-up or if the weather is cool or cold, the skin on my fingers and toes will hurt. Gloves and other warm clothing helps, but I find that I have to limit my time outdoors. Even what used to be a simple 10-minute walk between buildings at work in the fall and winter means checking the temperature and always making sure that I have a hat and gloves in what I used to consider mild weather. To treat these skin lesions, I apply a daily regimen of topical steroids and specialized compounded medications. I can no longer just get up, get dressed, and quickly leave the house. But the worst effect of discoid lupus has been the lesions and plaques that appear on my genitals. These affect urination and how my wife and I can be intimate with each other. Of course, this adds to even more stress on top of all of the other symptoms that I experience. In the summer, I'm now always concerned about sun exposure. I find myself thinking before I go out, do I have enough sunscreen on? Because of both lupus symptoms, but also because one of the side effects of immunosuppressants is increased sensitivity to the sun, I now limit my time outdoors and go out of my way to even be on the shadier side of the street when walking. I have not been to the beach in the last few years with my family, and it is really tough to hear my kids asking if I will go to them, go with them to play in the sand or swim in the ocean, and have to say to them that I am sick and I cannot. Even limiting exposure is sometimes not enough. Last month, my twin sons celebrated their fourth birthday. We had a party outside in a local park, and it was sunny and everyone was tired afterwards, as you would expect. But those two hours of sun exposure had a much more serious impact on me. I felt knocked out and I had to sleep for the rest of the day. I am hopeful that with continued treatment, my lupus symptoms will stabilize and decrease. But I know that for most patients, lupus symptoms can intensify and spread to other areas. Will there be new treatments for lupus? I hope that our experiences and stories we share today will make a difference in drug development. Thank you all for taking the time today to listen to us. Good morning. My name is Shana Garcia, and I'm 38 years old. I was 30 when my life changed forever. All of my life, I had unexplained illnesses and injuries, injuries that included a broken spine. I was told then that something was wrong with my blood and that I, and that I was an unable to heal correctly, but I still pushed on. I was in pain regularly, but I chalked it all up to being an athlete. I just worked through my symptoms until one day my symptoms took over. At the age of 30, I was a teacher. I was planning my wedding and taking care of my twin nieces. I began noticing changes. I was constantly tired and worn out. My students would speak to me, and I, but I couldn't understand what they were saying. I would confuse students easily, and I couldn't understand what was going on. I learned later that I was experiencing brain fog, which of course is not good when working with children. Now during this time, I'm stressing because I have no clue what's happening to me. I'm planning a wedding, and I'm behind on paperwork and lesson plans. This leads to a Friday evening when I came home at 4.30. I knew I needed to complete lesson plans, but I was so tired I told my family I was, taking, I was going to take a nap. I slept until 7 p.m. on Saturday evening. I vaguely remember my mother attempting to give me a drink of water and broth. However, I was unable to keep anything down. I was also developing a fever that reached 104. I was rushed to the hospital, but the doctors had no idea what to do with me. They couldn't bring my fever down. My white blood count was non-existent. I was in extreme pain. I stopped eating completely. I had tons of tests done, including a bone marrow extraction. The doctors told my family to say goodbye to me, that I was either going to go to a coma or I was going to die. The Hail Mary for me was when they sent all of my tests to the Mayo Clinic and they came back with the diagnosis that I have lupus. The minute those words were said to me, I felt like my world was over. I was just told that I have a debilitating disease and there was no cure. I had heard of lupus, but I didn't know exactly what it was. I was even more disturbed by the fact that my doctors had no clue of how to handle my case. I spent a month in the hospital, and when I got out, I was 15 pounds lighter and extremely weak. I tried to go back to work with no success. I would work for a day, and then I would be sick for three. If my students were sick, I would catch it, and I would be out for a month. 
the doctors finally told me that I was no longer allowed to work. Another symptom that I was experiencing was fainting spells. The scariest was when I was home in Chicago and I had actually just spoken at a lupus event. I woke up that morning feeling fine. I was excited to go to the event. I was a block away from the train station to go home. I was crossing one of the, the biggest intersections in Chicago and I fainted in the middle of the street with oncoming traffic. I was very blessed that a good Samaritan took me to the hospital. This would cause me to stay in the hospital for two more weeks. Again, the doctors had no clue what was going on. This would not be the only time when this would happen. Unfortunately, it would happen rather frequently. During these times, not only would I be experiencing the pain, fevers, confusion, dehydration, being bedridden for days and stressed out beyond belief, I would also extreme and become extremely depressed. I no longer had control over my life. I felt like it was hopeless and that I have no quality of life. Lupus became this bully that I would have to face on a day-to-day -day battle and I felt like I was losing. It just kept digging in at me and I couldn't find a way out. My depression became so bad that even on good days when I was able to get out of bed, I was paranoid that something bad was going to happen, so why try anyway? Lupus caused me to become a different person and I really missed the old me. I had no one to talk to who could possibly understand what I was going through. This caused me to lose many friends who could understand why I had to cancel plans if I was having a bad day. My family would try to be understanding, but they couldn't understand this disease and just didn't know how to handle me being sick. This would also lead to me getting a divorce. My husband was mad that I was sick and that I couldn't be the woman that I once was. I felt lupus take over and it was a major fight. I even had to leave my family in Chicago in order for me to have a better quality of life. Now I live in Arizona. This is one of the hardest decisions of my life. My family and I were devastated over the choice, but I had to, find, I had to try to find something that would help. I'm in no way symptom free. I still fight my bully on a daily basis, but just on a little fair playground now. I miss my family like crazy. It's hard and stressful starting new. I still have to watch everything that I do. I'm just doing the best that I can on a daily basis. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura Tanner. I'm a 36-year-old Army wife and mother of three sweet boys. My lupus story started around the age of 16 when I inexplicably lost 30 pounds over the course of one summer. Despite seeing multiple doctors and enduring countless tests, it was another 16 long years before I received my SLE diagnosis. My symptoms started off fairly mild with fatigue, frequent nausea, and the unexplained weight loss. But once I became a mother, they accelerated very quickly. I suffered two miscarriages, and my successful pregnancies were extremely high risk and concluded with premature births of my sons. I spent many months in the hospital while pregnant due to life-threatening blood clots in my legs and groin. I still deal with clots today. My legs have become so damaged from the chronic clotting that I now depend on prescription pain medications and compression stockings just to spend time on my feet. I've had at least 20 hospitalizations with DVTs, all thanks to lupus anticoagulant disorder. Other than clots, my most frequent struggle is dealing with debilitating fatigue and constant nausea. I require far more sleep than any of my friends do. While most people consider naps a luxury, they're an absolute necessity for me. I find it difficult many days to plan activities and chores while leaving a block of time open to just simply rest. Today, my major issues revolve around chest pains caused by inflammation of my heart and lungs that some days make breathing both difficult and painful. While inhalers and steroids help to minimize the swelling, I'm frequently embarrassed and ashamed when I have to stop on a staircase or sit down in a public floor simply because I cannot catch my breath and my heart is beating uncontrollably. People cannot see my lupus or hear my tachycardia, so it's mortifying to catch dirty looks and be the subject of jokes regarding how out of shape I just must be. Many of my days are also plagued with severe headaches revolving around a pseudotumor behind my right eye 
and the intracranial hypertension that it brings. When these headaches hit, my days are cut short. The pain is comparable to a migraine. However, no rescue medication can relieve that pain. I must stop what I am doing and retreat to a dark, quiet place and lay with ice on my head until the swelling and pressure subsides many hours or even days later. I made the decision to have my children while I was young with the dream of having lots of energy to be really an engaged parent and do so many fun things with them. Motherhood started out beautifully with daily park visits and fun weekend travel adventures. These days, most quality time with my boys is spent at home. When we do venture out on good days, I can only offer them short spurts of energy, such as pushing them on the swings, and then I must find a place to sit and rest a while. I would give anything to run and play with my sons, but Lupus has stolen that from me. I've always prided myself on my work ethic and my contributions to my family. So it is heartbreaking that I've not been able to work or even attend school in the past 11 years. Even when I tried online classes, I found deadlines impossible when I'm in bed multiple days a week. My SLE is so erratic and out of control that I never know what tomorrow is going to bring or have in store for me. With so much uncertainty of my symptoms and their behavior, my reliability for many things has suffered, therefore robbing me of my ability to help provide for my family. Lupus even makes maintaining relationships difficult. When friends or family invite me to spend time with them or attend functions, I often RSVP with every intention of going and having a wonderful time. However, 60% of the time roughly, on the day of the event, I'm too ill to leave the house and I have to cancel last minute. This unreliability is embarrassing and so disappointing to everybody involved. Many people have walked out of my life with the assumption that I'm just a terrible friend when in fact, lupus is the culprit. Some days, even basic household chores can feel impossible. After investing a lot of effort homeschooling my sons each day, I'm left with little energy to cook meals or wash dishes. My family is tasked with stepping in and helping more than the average child or spouse should have to. Having SLE gives me a plethora of things to worry about. I spend many sleepless nights terrified of what this cruel mystery disease has in store for my future. The idea of a shortened life expectancy and leaving my boys too soon devastates me. I also fret over the impact of my disease it has on those little eyes that have seen me suffer so much. Well, I believe I'm good at smiling through the pain, my sons. Sorry, my sons realize very quickly when lupus has reared its ugly head. Had someone told me at the age of 16 when my symptoms began that my life would eventually revolve around a life-threatening disease, I never would have believed them. Today, I must focus on maintaining a positive attitude and avoiding anything that can trigger another flare. I cannot control my SLE, but I can control how I deal with it. I refuse to let ro lupus rob me of the joys I have in life. Thank you for listening to my story. God bless y'all. Good morning. My name is Christopher Reed, and I'm an attorney in Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my story today. I was diagnosed with lupus at the age of 16, but with, lived with lupus eight years prior. It took so long for then doctors to determine that I had lupus because lupus is so rare in males. My journey began with chronic headaches, frequent muscle spasms, and several other symptoms. My symptoms progressed to fevers, arthritis, and tremendous and rapid weight loss. I remember sitting in my driver's ed class, barely able to wrap my hands around the steering wheel and suffering from a constant cough. Walking up the stairwell to my bedroom each day felt like someone was standing on my chest. I was eventually admitted to the hospital and, and then to intensive care. 
after having a seizure. By that time, my immune system had attacked my heart, my lungs, my brain, and my digestive system. Over time, I continued to suffer from severe organ involvement. It took me eight years to graduate from college, and I had to return home to live with my parents. During my gaps in college, I had several long visits to the hospital, and I was constantly worried about medical insurance and med medication costs because I was out of school. With the help of Emory University, many of my medical costs were taken care of, and I was eventually able to graduate from college. Somewhere along the line, I got the bright idea, and then sometimes I look back on it thinking it's a crazy idea to go to law school. I moved eight hours from home and managed to get through three years of law school pain-free and symptom-free. A few months after law school, I knew something was wrong, but I ignored it because I was starting my career. I managed my first job out of law school dealing with stage three kidney disease and nine months of horrible cytoxin treatments. I spent several, several weeks in the hospital during that nine months. It was a blessing that I was working for a wonderful judge who allowed me to work from my hospital bed, but hospital bed, work while I was on in the infusion room getting my toxin treatments and working from home. After nine months of cytoxin, my lupus nephritis went into remission and I started to frequent the gym, travel, and I purchased my first home. While my lupus was quiet, I began developing fibromyalgia, Sjogren's syndrome, and a number of other side effects from drugs. Today, in 27 years after my diagnosis, my chief complaint is arthritis, anemia, shortness of, of breath, muscle pain, and constant fatigue and brain fog. I always feel like I have the flu. The pain in my arms and my legs is excruciating. It takes me several hours to get up in the morning and to get dressed. It also takes me several hours to get to sleep at night. Because of my limited kidney function, I cannot take pain medication. I rarely arrive at work on time. My body temperature fluctuates between hot and cold throughout the day, and I often have a heater blowing in my office in the middle of the summer because I can't stand the pain that the air condition causes on my skin. I'm short of breath because I have a diminished lung capacity. I'm 43 and yet feel like I have the lungs of an elderly person. Therefore, I take frequent breaks when it when walking around the hills of Atlanta. It's very difficult for me to exercise, even though I know it's important because the cardio is so difficult. I work in a profession in which I'm constantly being tested, a profession that requires that I think on my feet and contribute to complex discussions. It's difficult for me to participate in these discussions because I often lose my train of thought. I can't remember certain laws at the drop of a hat, and the pain is so excruciating, I have lapses in thought. I have had the difficult conversation with my boss, letting him know that even if I work late on one evening or work hard one week, it's going to affect my performance the next day. The stress of working on constant deadlines and in a high-pressure environment is taking its toll on my body. It's difficult for me to remain competitive in my career, so I've taken a back seat at work and taken on more administrative work and, and basically stopped practicing. I considered other career options. While I consider my cons current symptoms to be mild compared to the past, I fear and my family fears me relapsing into severe organ involvement. When my mother hears me cough, whether I'm on the telephone or in her presence, she always worries that my lungs or my heart are involved again. 
I have constant cluster headaches some, sometimes, and I fear during the periods that I'm going to have another seizure or pass out. My parents fear that I will stop breathing at night because at one point I did stop breathing and went into, into intensive care. When I complain about my pain and my fatigue to my doctors, they often tell me that I'm doing well, that there was a period of time when I was truly and, and really sick. So I take their word for it, even though I'm feeling bad. I never stop giving up. I always persevere and I try to remember those days when I was in remission, enjoying my trips to the beach, enjoying going to the swimming pool after work and exercising, enjoying my day-to-day -day life. I rely on those memories because those memories give me hope that things will change, hope that things will ultimately get better, and hope that each day will be a good day. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Beck. I'm 16 years old. I live in San Jose, California, and I have lupus. I was first diagnosed with lupus at age 13. I was taken to the doctor for a possible ear infection. While there, my parents mentioned their concern for my weight loss. I had gone from 100 to 65 pounds in the course of a summer, and, this, um, and my lack of energy. This led to extensive medical tests that led to the diagnosis of stage four lupus nephritis with fluid around the brain, fluid around the heart, and fluid around the stomach. This was hard to accept. Try processing as a 13-year-old that you're gonna have to go through chemotherapy and take 23 medications a day. I was going into my last year of middle school. I had a lot of friends. I was a section leader in choir and a web leader for my school. For the first time, I felt different from everybody else and that thought scared me. I spent two months in the hospital and when I got out, I was given a pick line and had to start taking medication. And if anybody tells you that learning to take medication is easy, they're lying. <sighs> And if anybody here is taking pregnizone, you know the horrible aftertaste that comes if you get it on your tongue for even a second. My first month of taking pregnizone, I had to crush it up and put it in orange juice just to get my body to be able to swallow it without gagging. I didn't know how long it would be till I got used to everything. Though my lupus is under control, I still suffer from many symptoms and side effects of the medications that help control it. With my fatigue, it is hard to get up in the morning or stay awake or focus during class, at least I got out of PE. <laughs> because of the trauma of being diagnosed with lupus at my age, I developed depression and anxiety, leaving me feeling hopeless and sad most days. But one of the hardest symptoms I struggle with is chronic pain in my stomach. It can be hard to function in school and so social situations when you have constant excruciating pain that will not go away no matter what you try. Some days I'll forget the pain is there, but other days I lay in bed clutching my stomach wondering if it will ever go away. It feels like every day I'm putting on a show and a smile pretending that I'm doing fine when all I want to do is cry. Though my family is helpful and sympathetic, it can still be hard when they don't understand my symptoms or what it's like to have pain in your body constantly. My friends are only in their teens and don't really know much about lupus or even what it is most of the time but I wish they understood what it's like to go through it. Every day is a mystery. I never know where I'll be, whether I'll be singing and skipping in the park or laying in bed in too much pain to move, but life has to go on, forcing me to go on along with it. After missing most of my eighth grade year, when I went to high school, I was excited for the opportunity to start over, but this dream came to an abrupt and dramatic halt. Because I have nephritis, I am hypertensive, and take lisinopril to control my blood pressure. While at school, my blood pressure dropped too low and I collapsed. I was able to hear what was around me, but wasn't able to respond. <sighs> Unfortunately, the administration at my high school did not share my medical condition or medications I was taking with the staff. Because of this, I looked perfectly fine and just passed out all of a sudden. The school nurse and my teacher thought I was faking it. 
and told the paramedics that I was faking it. When my parents arrived, they informed the paramedics and staff of my medical condition, and they took me to the emergency room. I was transferred to Children's Hospital where I stayed for a week. After being discharged from the hospital, it was decided by my parents and the school administration that they could not meet my medical needs. I transferred to a private school 30 minutes away from my home, in traffic, by the way. I thought it would be over in a few years and that everything would be okay, but it's much more complicated than that. Some of these symptoms of lupus will stick with me forever. I will never be able to sunbathe. I can't use some common pain medications. And the hardest thing is knowing that it could come back at any time. I'm scared that my lupus will come back and attack my kidneys again, leading to kidney failure. I am scared that I will, eventually, I will have to go through chemo again. And that wasn't fun at all. Living a normal teenage life is hard when there are some things you can do that your friends can. If my friends were to decide to go out for a night of drinking when they're in college, I would not be able to participate because of the side effects of my Fordic and other medications that would not permit it. As an adult, should I decide to have a family? Because of my lupus and medications, my pregnancy would be high risk with the chance of birth defects. Though this speech might seem bleak, I have a good life. I'm in Medicaid admission, and I understand that feeling sorry for myself or having other people feel sorry for me doesn't do anything. Having people there to listen and give me advice and honestly tell me the things that are hard to hear. I know what it's like to be the other. This has taught me to be a kinder person who is able to listen thoughtfully to others and see from a point of view that I hadn't seen before. I am preparing for college and in the future I want to be psychologist for kids that have medical issues like me. Thank you.